terrified. I'm basically running a line. It's like walking on the edge of a cliff. I can see uh, Tori's up. You can get up super early, about seven, and there's a nice mist. This lake was a, a natural speck lake, cold, deep water lake that my grandfather fished and caught like massive fish out of here in the late 60s, early 70s. Some buddy threw largemouth bass in it, which has just pretty much ruined any remaining trout fishery. But then uh, the ministry stocked it back to what it originally had in it which was speckled trout but this morning at camp i saw probably like a two pound bass and i know since it's been stocked it gets hit pretty hard in the winter some of these stock lakes i don't know i found like the fish kind of can be hard to find they're almost easier to target through the ice and then um yeah when you come in the uh, spring after ice out and fish for them there's not a lot i've noticed that couple times. Hi. Tori cooked up a feast. It was awesome. I did some fishing. No luck. And uh, we think we are going to go for a hike today. We got a beautiful day, unseasonably warm outside. Um, and the bugs aren't out yet. It's still too early in the season. So we're gonna take advantage of that and uh, hike up to a beautiful vantage point. And then we'll probably come back here and I'll uh, do some more fishing this evening and hopefully we can get a couple trout for dinner. We'll see. Man, I always had stories about the city line. And the crazy nights, I figure I should probably give it a try. Baby, check it out, see what it's all about. But the traffic was fast and the money was slow. The people I met you never get to know. I kind of miss this place I used to live back home. Cause up here it's breaking. Saw a bunch in the shallows at the end of the lake. So I'm gonna try there just along the shore. Slow down mama, why you talk so mean? Good Lord, man, shit, it ain't what it's saying. You got a nice clothes, a nice shoes, boogie down at the bar, fiddle 
Jones. Not my target species. Mama, hi. Hi. This is a lot of food. Maybe Hattie wants some broccoli, I don't know. Here I am near Whitney, Ontario, and I am going to run the upper Madawaska River. So this is a four to a six hour paddle uh, to the next bridge at the Victoria Macaulay Lake Road. So I'm officially about to jump into it. Feeling a little nervous. Uh, this is definitely advanced level whitewater river, probably a class three plus, class four river, some class fives on it that I'll need to portage. And I'm out here by myself. It's high water. The water's cold. It's spring. So definitely, uh, you know, feeling what probably is a, a good amount of fear, which will hopefully make me act wiser out there and not any, run anything I shouldn't. So here we go. We are on our way. I got a guidebook for this river here. Looks like I have uh, a couple challenging rapids that might not even be runnable. My guidebook is calling this first rapid a class five <laughs> in high water. So it looks like I'll be portaging. I'm on the wrong side of the river. I can hear it just raging. So it looks like, yeah, unfortunately, I'm gonna be beginning this trip with a portage. Probably could have just driven to there and put in there if I'd known I was going to jump off with a portage. But that's okay because uh, I get to see Rapid Lake and this part of the river. Coming up, I have a long set of class twos followed by a class one and then a rapid called Long Rapid. And it is aptly named. It just goes on and on and on. And it's a solid class three. I think it's about 400 meters. So Super excited to run that. I'm not gonna have to pick my boat up for a little while now. like that rapid is coming up a lot faster than I thought and look there's like literally hardly anywhere to pull over because the river's up into the trees yeah not much not much space in between this rapid called bridge rapid and that rapid and I have to pull up into the forest here even to get out so that's that's not a good sign it means if I had to portage this rapid I'd have to bushwhack all my gear through this flooded timber even to get to the trail. So, fingers crossed, but I'm gonna jump out and go have a look. Well, unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to portage this. Just cause, you know what? I don't have a lot of practice yet this year. 
and it's a new canoe and this rapid is raging I mean I've run it before uh, but uh, yeah I just don't feel comfortable doing it especially out here alone somehow I've screwed up and I still have like 13k to go and it's gonna be dark in three hours so obviously having to portage these last two rapids has cut into my time and I just started too late but I'm still gonna go for it some good time through this stretch that's pretty nice beautiful beautiful evening a little anxiety but uh, no point in worrying too much about that because it ain't gonna help me looks like we have another fun class 2 up here uh, these are called Russell Rapids so named because of the interesting rustling sound at the last of these rapids. So Russell Rapids is a stretch of five rapids in high water, all class two. So this is probably the last stretch. Looks challenging though. We got some tight, tight turns in here. Like we got some fun stuff coming up here. decided that if it gets too dark to paddle I'm gonna try to leave my stuff in the bush on this railway trestle and hike out back to my truck drive around and pick it up drive on this trestle with my truck and pick my stuff up but yeah it could be like solid 10k hike in the dark I'm not 100% sure where this railway trestle goes I know this way it goes back to Whitney but that's not even close to where my truck is things are getting a little interesting okay Whew. that took a while so running the bottom of Herman chute here and we have tight turn rapid too pretty but I got the job done but we got more white water to come yeah that was awesome looks like we have something a little more squirrely up here
take out here. This is sketchy. Probably shouldn't be doing this. Oh, sh just avoided there. There's three more rapids. One's pretty long. Oh man, what a fun trip. First I was worried that the water was gonna to be too high. I wasn't gonna be enjoying, I wasn't gonna be able to enjoy too many of the rapids, but then sure enough, a lot of the easier rapids that would have been typically easy were a lot of fun with some really big waves. And there it is, the bridge. My truck is just over there. It's safe to say I did it. That's awesome. <laughs> in the boat, in the boat. And we are off. Just uh, access this bull lake via bull lake outfitters. We'll go a good little distance. Probably just gonna blast through this lake and get into what is a natural trout lake, three portages deep into the backcountry. Uh, going into a steady headwind, beautiful day. Bugs are out, but the wind's keeping them down, and we are in search of spring trout. the deepest I've ever been stuck here before and I'm afraid to try pulling out my foot because I'm gonna lose my shoe Help! oh my god oh. I did it I did it Woo! That was insane. Nobody even saw. Man, I'm not gonna tell them until they watch my video and then I'll get a good laugh. fish here 25 pound test fluoro and a uh, about a one ounce keel sinker we're not expecting the lake trout to be 
too deep at this time of year. Probably, probably fit too. There's one here and there's another one up over there, That's I think. What I When we were getting her, it was really almost. And that was. We had these directions on them. <laughs> well, here we are. As you can see, we found a great campsite. I just ate pasta, which is boring. And, and everyone's like, Jim, why didn't you bring moose sticks? What's wrong with you? But I guess I just blew it. But I packed for this trip, unfortunately, a little quicker than I would like to have. But we're just having a really good time, just uh, chilling by the fire. I'm gonna throw some more logs on and uh, turn in. We did try a little bit of fishing, but you know, we got two more days to fish and uh, we just kind of trolled here with the winds. It was very challenging. So um, yeah, uh, hopefully you're gonna see us eating trout for tomorrow. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm hoping I'm eating trout tomorrow and not the, the pasta. I'm gonna be honest with you, it wasn't very good. Anyway, so Nate's gonna break out some <laughs> that we're gonna get up and you know, call the night around 5 a.m. pretty happy with this spot there's not a ton of good places to camp very pretty lake but um, sloping shorelines and rocky and so we think we found a pretty nice spot uh, here so we're gonna stay put and yeah I'm basically more or less gonna climb into the canoe and hopefully get some lake trout I mean, I'm sure there's like 20 pounders in here, but as far as eating goes and good size goes, that is a beauty. Sean has got a fish on. Yeah. That's perfect eating size, that's good. Perfect. <laughs> okay, I have just hooked into a fish. There he is. But, there it is. Well, I switched my uh, lures to a white tube jig. And these guys went ahead of me and then when I was landing that fish, I got blown into a deep bay. So I have to fight back against the wind. But uh, yeah, this is a, a natural lake trout lake. That species has probably has things that are specific to it that you wouldn't find exactly the same in any other lake because they've been here for probably about 8,000 years. We pulled over here for shore lunch after having some luck with the fishing and uh, doing so discovered a great place to camp. The wind picked up some, but we're all kind of thinking that maybe we just move our campsite to here because we've had good luck with lake trout. I caught mine right out there. Nate caught his out there. Sean won in here, etc. And uh, it's just a beautiful open spot. Um, and we do have time. We have another night on this lake, so we might move. But first, we are going to enjoy a delicious shore lunch of lake trout. Get filled up. I'm feeling pretty hungry uh, because whatever way you look at it, we got some headwinds to paddle back into to get back to camp. So I need to fuel up. So looking forward to that and then uh, getting back out and fishing some more. So good times. The trip. It's really well cooked. Perfect. Absolutely delicious. Came from the States and I know. Gas is your TV. Oh, 
all the convincing I need. Well, the winds died down some, and uh, we decided to explore the lake a bit more, do some more fishing, and uh, we came over to a gathering of islands. And uh, Sean and Ted and Nate jumped out and kind of scouted what looks to be like a pretty decent campsite. So we might actually just jump on this site instead of paddling back to uh, the point where we had the shore lunch, which is kind of cool. Um, I don't know if the fishing will be good, as good directly off the site, but we will be closer to the way out of here in case we get a heavy wind on our last day that could keep us pinned down. So that's one good thing. And it looks like a really nice site too. Well, it is dinner time. Uh, everybody's cooking up their, their delicious food. Sean had some pork chops. He had uh, some baked potato. Uh, Ted's cooking up a lake trout. Nate's got some fancy dehydrated meal. And I'm cooking a can of Habitat pea soup. It's gonna hit the spot. My plan is to, when I cover them with bacon, it'll be visually less uh, noticeable, and so I bacon might be able to. Has that same thing, though, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't eat that, man. <laughs> of the day fishing. That's a nice little shore lunch trout. Oh! oh ho, ho, ho. Yeah! That is a tank. Dude! Yeah! All right. Yeah! What do we have there, Nate? My biggest trout ever. Yeah. Which isn't saying much, but hey, man. Well, uh, Ted's already hooked into one, and Nate just hooked into the biggest fish of the trip yet. Looks like a beauty, still good eater. So, uh, yeah, maybe the cold front isn't hurting us so much. Just paddling along and looks like the morning bite is over. So we're sort of picking our way fishing to get to a shore lunch spot. And uh, we came up on a bald eagle. It was acting a little territorial. Well, sure enough, it's uh, nest is right in this white pine tree here, which is pretty cool. You don't find much in anything other than red pine around here. That's true. And tortilla was when you get it. It was deadly, you know, you picked everywhere. 
Good job, buddy. That's, that just looks amazing. I, I want to just put that in the sun and let it dry. <clears throat> the one I, that big one that you're asking me about, that was really dark. Right. Well, there we go. This one just from shore with a large Williams whitefish. What more can you ask for? Just hammering beauty lakers from shore. Amazing, perfect day. A little late to get on the board today, but I'm pretty happy with that. Ted's hooked into another one here. It's a fish. Nice. Beauty fish by Ted. Now Nate's got one. We're just hammering fish. It escaped. With my lure. Oh no. Got one. I guess that is about it for the day. Awesome day. A lot of fish caught. Uh, I think Ted got four today, two big ones. Nate had one, oh geez, Nate had three beauties. Me and Sean had, uh, geez, I had two. Uh, Sean had one or two at least. So anyways, yeah, it did well. Um, definitely some weather fluctuations. Unseasonably hot when we came in and then unseasonably cold, but it leveled off uh, this afternoon and dealing with that headwind yesterday didn't make fishing or anything easier but um, after the weather kind of stabilized a bit and we got more towards the evening the bite picked up and uh, yeah we all just started catching fish um, lake trout aren't easy to catch if you're catching lake trout you're you know like I'm not to get don't get me wrong I, I love catching bass pike it's really fun but anybody can pick up a rod for the most part and catch a bass but if you're in here catching lake trout um, usually they're a little more challenging you got to work harder for them they're a little bit more elusive and uh, it's definitely something to brag a little bit more about so um, that's pretty cool Ted and I uh, when we were kids the lake we grew up on had lake trout and we didn't even figure out how to catch them until we were probably teenagers uh, we didn't have the patience and the know-how and that kind of stuff so we would have been proud of ourselves of our, our chill our childhood selves would be quite proud of what we've managed to accomplish here and lake completely to ourselves as well gorgeous campsite gorgeous shoreline spots rugged shores myriad of islands loving it so i'm gonna go up and uh, get into some of nate's emergency wine get a fire going and uh fry up some fish for dinner and uh I don't know what else is on the menu tonight. Awesome, awesome day. Would anybody like a celebratory little nip of fireball? morning at camp nice day still like definitely a little cool out which will keep my fish from spoiling which is awesome had a nice pancake meal for breakfast after rising to a beautiful mist coming up off the water and a perfect sunset last night oh yeah feels pretty good yeah Woo. there we go
Outfitters. It's where we started our trip from, where we parked our vehicles. Another great trip in the books. North, in the boat. Come on. In the boat, come on. Okay, okay. Go to the front. Go to the front. What the hell, North? We are off. We got me, my brother Ted. And the Budnik brothers, Max and Xander, we just put in here to paddle the lower Magnetowan River. It is spring. This is the Monday of the May 2 4 long weekend right now. So, the first order of business is paddling Wawashkesh Lake. Super excited. Another trip kicking off. Oh, yeah, good side. Nice. Like that. There's a cool uh, little waterfall coming in here, eh? Okay. Dam ahead, keep away. Who knows, but I might run this dam run it before tandem and solo but it's pretty dangerous and the water level has to be right and even then even if it is I might not do it because I'm scared well I've decided that I'm going to run the dam in part because I don't want to portage but it looks probably about the most ideal water level I've seen it at for running it. You never know though, I might dump, but uh, just putting my dry suit on. I think I'm going to make it. I see a nice V in the tongue and the water's pushing through. A lot of the time what's dangerous about dams is there's the water's like a keeper. It's coming back on itself and you can get stuck in that, but I'm not seeing that here. so. idea here guys is to not get swept down the rapid getting to camp north just me north just kicked me out from where I was trying to pull off
Xander um, is not is still sleeping. <laughs> he only still... slept for like two hours or so. Yeah. <sighs> We're gonna walk up there, check out the canyon because it's beautiful. I am uh, terrified to the point of dizziness because I've decided that I'm going to run the canyon. It's uh, probably a 300 meter long class three plus with the challenging part at the top. I'm gonna put my skills to the test and run my uh, 15 foot prospector down this canyon fully loaded. So wish me luck. Looks like he's nice and safe and he's wound up in that big eddy. So I was a little concerned for him when he was coming for that boulder. I saw the canoe was about to hit it, but it seems he did all right avoiding it in the end, so. Neither of us got you. Ah, yes. Woo! Yeah! Challenging and time-consuming part of the river good to put it behind us, but super fun to do it So that's pretty cool uh, after this. Uh, it's gonna be a little calmer for a bit. We have another rapid down river Nice okay, good. Mountain shoot but I think I'm gonna go for it. I think I can make it through. You never know. So fingers crossed, cause there is a really dangerous kind of spot where you could get kind of sucked back into a hole. But I feel like if I was gonna dump, I'd be well enough past that that the current would push me out. So I think I'm gonna go for it.
Well, there you go. We all did it. Xander was unsure at the beginning. He ended up running it, absolutely nailing a great run. Can't expect to hit it much better than that. But it's late in the day. Uh, some haze in the sky that's come this way all the way from Alberta and the forest fires there, I think. But uh, yeah, late in the day, warm evening, black flies are uh, hanging out with us here. So we're just gonna basically bail and uh, get on our way, take the first campsite we can see. But uh, awesome uh, time here at Mountain Chute. Successful runs by everybody. So morale is pretty high. Day three of our trip exploring the Magnetowan River saw our group of four portaging a beautiful waterfall early on. Ahead of us on this day lay several challenging whitewater rapids and some tough portaging to deal with before finding a place to camp. It's fighting like a pick. Oh, ho, ho. oh, it's a dink pike. Definitely a lot smaller than what I typically keep, but uh, you know, enough for one person and a little bit of a little bit of an hors d'oeuvre for everyone else. But hopefully, we can get into something else. But all I have for dinner tonight is uh, is uh, a small can of soup. And there it is, Train Trestle Rapid. As you can see, I didn't make that one. Just chose a line that was kind of stupid and bombed sideways into a hole. <laughs> Not even close, so hopefully these guys can learn from my mistakes. I'm glad I didn't want to do Jim's line. I'm gonna do the inside line. Uh, yeah.
This is the embarrassingly small pike I caught earlier. After I take off the back strap, I just cut down on the outside of the ribs here. Uh, I think the, uh, the cold front's really what did us in on the fishing here. This you cut in half. One, two, three, four, five. Ted's got the tent set up. Fine young broth of a lad. I'm gonna make some coffee too, eh? Uh, minimal bones too. Mm. Right? Can deal with a little more of that, eh? Six a.m. wake up, and uh, there is about 15 clicks left of portage, and um, at least two other solid rapids that need to be scouted. Uh, but I believe are going to be fun, runnable rapids. Um, I don't know if I'll get a ton of time to fish, but um, I'm thinking maybe if I get a chance to wet a line today, I'll do it. If it's not going to suck into too much time, and uh, maybe bring um, a fish fry home for Tori, which always sort of softens the blow when I'm like yeah can you just take care of the two kids for four days while I go out there and you know fish and high five you know a bunch of buddies so <laughs> that always helps if I come home with fresh fish for dinner. That feels pretty big. Boom! Yeah, baby. Yeah, there's a lot of meat on that. I'm gonna keep it. With another adventure down the Magnetowan River over, I'm reminded of how lucky I am to live on this river and have this lasting wild place that has somehow escaped road development right in my backyard. Today is gonna to feel like we are going back in time a little bit because I'm paddling a canoe, which obviously people have been doing for thousands of years, even right here on this river. And I'm going to visit a blacksmith who lives off grid down river from me. Well, it's gonna be pretty tricky at the top for sure. Uh, I can't fit through that tight little slot with those two kind of flat rocks. The left is just too shallow. It's just pouring over a rock sheet. So I'm going to have to kind of find a line right there that kind of goes just left of those rocks and just right of these ones. Then I'm going to have to get left hard and then I'm going to have to get right hard. Ideal. There's a rock there, I'm like left, right, left, right. I should have just chosen a way and going for it, but honestly, going right in that hole was the safest way to totally avoid the big boulder. So it's kind of, I think, what I instinctually did. That was fun though. Got a little bit hairier at the end, just as expected. Gotta come in real slow here. If I miss Daddy, I get swept over the waterfall. Actually, not much of an eddy here at all.
Well, all this biting here is bass, and bass are out of season, so I'm gonna move on. Alright. Woo! She looks pretty intense. Oh my goodness. It looks uh, potentially unrunnable. Looks like a huge hole at the bottom. So I think I'm just gonna freaking bomb the middle. I might swamp and dump, but we'll see what happens. But I think I'm gonna try to take that hole on the left. Hopefully that curling side wave doesn't flip me to the right. I'm gonna hit this big one here on the left. Hopefully get left of that main hole there. Try not to tip right and just Basically, try not to swamp. Good chance I swamped though, so fingers crossed. Could Definitely could use a spray deck for this one. I could have avoided them actually, but I hit them. But I ended up overcompensating with that cross draw brace. Super fun run! Okay, we got something on. Oh, it's a huge bath. An osprey. That's Chris, the blacksmith. Hi Chris, how's it going? Good, Jim, how are you? Good, thank you very much for having me back here. Yeah. And um, into your shop, canoeing, blacksmithing, you got it all here on the mag. It kind of feels like, you know, something people used to do in the olden days. Yeah. Harder? Yeah, longer good. It's good. Ooh, again? We have just finished what is a fire poker and as you saw it it, it says Tori on it. Um, this is something that we're going to use at my house on our outdoor fire. We like to have outdoor cookouts where we cook over the fire. We do corn boil ups, fish fries, burgers, steaks, you name it with friends and we like to cook over the fire. Uh, the really cool thing about this, it's not just a fire poker, it's specially made as a coal raker. Look at that. So you can rake the coals back. And it was really uh, a treat to watch Chris make this uh, down to the last detail. I mean, look at that. I mean, talk about functional art. by the time we put in and we're gonna fish a bit 
and uh, hopefully get into the evening bite before coming home. We're just going to a local lake that's about a 20 minute drive from our house that is part of the Magnetowan system. Beautiful lake, there's cottages on it, but they're majority all uh, water access um, and lots of islands to explore. Access a lake that's on the Magnetowan system downriver from our house, and now we're going to attempt to motorboat back up the Magnetowan after crossing this big, beautiful lake. The only thing is, we basically have to motorboat up a rapid here. Uh, at this water level, it's not raging or anything, but it might be shallow, so it might be a little tricky. We're just coming up to it right now. You can already see we're in a little canyon and there's some current in here. But beautiful trip across the lake. Kids are having fun. Uh, and it's a gorgeous day. Huh? Too dangerous. Well, I talked to some people who come up here with their boat all the time. It looks pretty deep, but... Or should we go up that? I don't want to try it. I would say left, if anything, but... I don't really want to try it. It's what, like, I don't... There's nothing super shallow here. Great, slow down. It looks okay over here, but it's shallow right here. Okay. No, it's, it, no, there's a giant rock. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, it's, it's not gonna work. Okay, well, I made it up the rapids. I had to wade up. Tori wasn't too confident driving up and I've never driven up those ones before. It looked deep, but it was definitely safer just wading up the way we did. It's going up some strong current here. Tori's checking for rocks. Okay. Okay, it's getting shallow. I gotta lift the motor up a bit more here. It would only get caught in sticks though. Right. So we've made it up river in our boat to this wicked canyon. It does not disappoint. Unfortunately, we can't hike up because there's a big waterfall along the Portage Trail, but Tori cut her toe in the whole process. So we're gonna take a few casts here because it looks like a great fishing hole. Pike tool. Fish. Nice. That didn't take long, eh? Yeah. What's our limit? For bass, five each. Five each? Yeah. Catch it? Not a bad little eater. Catch it? It's a feisty one. Fish! Oh. Yeah, fish! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fish! You want fish? You want to touch? touch. No. Eat it. Eat it. Yeah, we're going to eat it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you cute little guy, aren't you? Yeah. Yes, you are. Okay, well, not bad for an absolute midday fishing hole. Caught four fish, two nice pike, a rock bass, 
and a smallmouth bass and Tori lost what seemed like it was a I don't know at least two pounds smally maybe more so pretty tanky smally but uh, I think maybe we're going to uh, move on from this spot we might pull over on this island for a minute and uh, let Huddy stretch his legs a bit Oh, you want Bussy to cover your eyes? Okay, well, we have to run this little rapid here to get back down. This is the one that I was thinking was deep enough to drive up, but to be honest with you, going down it might be a little sketchier, so I pulled the motor up all the way, and I'm just gonna row down it. Here we go. Okay, well, it is a sweltering hot day, and we're just pulling over somewhere to take a dip maybe have a bite to eat. Uh, we just bombed here across the lake, made it down the rapid safe, caught a couple fish. So yeah, it's probably about 4.30 in the afternoon and we are hot, the kids are napping. So we're gonna cool off in the water and um, do a little bit more fishing before heading home. There is one pike cleaned up, one more to go, and a bass. All right, there's our call so far. Well, we had an awesome little time there, cleaned up some fish, had a bite to eat. The kids took a nap, and uh, it's late in the evening, but the days are long at this time of year, so we're going down into a bay where cottages there's nothing here we're gonna see if we can't uh hook into a couple more bass before the day's over Titan. Titan oh yeah good. oh that's pretty good size keep i think we keep it keep it eat it, eat it. let it go bye bye fish bye bye <laughs> <laughs> that is crying because we let it go bye bye got some rain clouds moving in Well, that was pretty cool. We heard some rustling in the leaves there and sure enough, it was a doe, which is interesting because uh, Wawashkesh means deer in Anishinaabemowin, which is the Ojibwe language and came to Wawashkesh and sure enough, we saw a deer. That's cool. Wish we were seeing some more bass though. Got some storm clouds moving in here, so we might pack it in a little bit. We got a good good amount of fish to, uh, to eat, but we're hoping we can catch another one or two nice ones before we head home. I can't catch it anything. Hat. I've gotten so many bites. Hat. Yeah, that's Wesley's hat. And I just cannot set the hook. I just want to catch one more. No. I want to land no one more. I've had a few on no and they just get off. And then... No hat. Frustrating. No hat. Demoralizing. No hat. Fish. Fish, yeah. So we're the blue dot. And can you see it? Yeah. I'll hit play. Oh, oh my goodness, it's coming right for us. Yeah. Maybe we better bail. 
It's like, do we either just hot, wait it out? Or well, maybe we just I go mean, back we wait towards... It out, though, maybe like, we go back towards the boat launch, fish there a bit, and then... Uh, thanks, Eddie. So it says, so we're, it's quarter to eight. At eight o'clock, it's going to be right over us in 15 minutes. Yeah, okay, maybe we should go. He's got one. We stopped to try another spot. Well, it looks like we're getting some rain after all. These two little guys are newt suited up. It's a little boy down here. We just arrived at Al Can Air, and this is a float plane base near Mayo. And Mayo is known as the heart of the Yukon, which is interesting because I'm paddling the Heart River, H A R T, in the heart of the Yukon. So I feel like there's a dad joke in there. Clouds on a rainy day. Mm -hmm. Oh, the fire in the hills, and I'm headed your way. Oh, it's alright, baby, don't be afraid. I'm just giving heads up on my dangerous ways. And I know. an interesting feeling. My float plane took off. I'm literally all alone in the remote northern Yukon and it is beautiful surrounded by giant mountains. No place to camp here. I have a long shallow creek to contend with before getting to the Heart River proper. You know I think uh, I'm just gonna start paddling.
There we go. That's the color they like, is silver. Yeah! Oh, right in the boat! Looks like on the map it opens up a little bit on the next stretch, hopefully. Looks like I might have to get out again right here though. Well, I'm just sitting on the back here like this because it's easier to hop on and off because there's literally pools that are too deep to wade and a few feet later you're stuck again. So hopefully this doesn't keep up for too much longer, man. I just ran up on some more rocks here for the shallow swift. I'm gonna have to get out and drag. And I stood up and it looks like there might be a place I can camp here. It's not the best, but I'm gonna get out and just check it out. I wouldn't want the water level to come up much more. I suppose I could pitch a tent on this. Really lumpy though, but certainly better than uh, the rest of the stuff around here, which is like this. Maybe I'll push on for another hour. I see some, like a little hill there which means there might be some drier land over that way. Bit of a risk, but I think either way, I'm not gonna be camping in a primo site tonight. We'll see though. Go. Yukon whitefish. Mmm. Very mild. Very mild. Not as marked as a flavor as a grayling. Good morning, Yukon! Definitely not getting down this without dragging. Oh man, this is shallow. Looks like the water has gone down.
Oxbow Lake here. And Oxbow Lake is when a creek or a river takes big bends like that, the sediment builds up in between the bends and the main river diverts from it, leaving a horseshoe style lake that looks like an oxbow. And that's what you call an oxbow lake. Sometimes they're still connected by water. Sometimes they're completely separate, but uh, it just goes to show how rivers change over time, especially ones that bend and weave. We're here. We have to go all the way to here. gonna give us some more water. I just saw three chunky grayling swimming in this crystal clear pool of water here. So I had to pull over and take a couple casts. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at that. Love it. Fish, crystal clear water, you can paddle. Oh, got another one. Oh, huge. Oh, I lost it. Oh, look, it's trying to hit it. Bam. There it is. There it is. Come here. Oh, it's not the same big one. What a little honey hole I found here. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Look at that. That is a thing of beauty. Well, I am starving and since I got to camp a little earlier, I think I might uh, cook up some stew, some fish stew actually. So it's about dinner time. My tummy is telling me it's dinner time. Special ingredient, clam juice. I'm serious, clam juice. And then the final ingredient, Arctic grayling. Mmm, wow. A lot of flavor. the water day three what does it have in store whoa this is beautiful though <gasps> Oh my God, a huge grayling, oh my goodness. Freaking tank, probably, probably two pounds for sure. I can paddle though. Get more interesting. Another sweeper here.
just, just made it. Whew. I should not have taken the time to pull up my GoPro. That's why that happened. Huh, this is sketchy. Sweeper, tight turn, two boulders. Oh man, this looks sh bouldery class one here. Beautiful clear water pool here. A couple of graylings swimming in it. It's almost a surreal experience. As I'm wading along these channels in this braided section of creek, I'm looking down at this crazy emerald clear water and I can just see chunky Arctic grayling swimming in the current, waiting for food to come down river and it's really, really awesome. I don't know what it is, but something about it just seems almost surreal. And there it is, the Heart River, I made it! Yes, oh, it looks so beautiful. Whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm on the Heart River. Definitely, it's not as clear as uh, Elliott Creek. It almost has like an emerald color with silt in it. And I am gonna camp right here, don't mind if I do. That was another long day, it's about 7.30. Uh, got on the water at 9.30, so long haul for me on Elliott Creek. I imagine it would be a lot easier for some people uh, when the water level's higher, you know, and um, or somebody who's, you know, not as heavy as a person as me. Um, I'm sure it beat the heck out of the bottom of this canoe, but I mean, that's what these expedition grade canoes can handle. Between all the endless wading and dragging and the anxiety about Am I gonna make it? Is this river gonna dry up? To then finding out that, hey, it's not so bad, feeling a little elated, getting to paddle some rapids and tricky turns to all of a sudden then getting stuck in shallow water again and having to drag and you know manage my way through braided river with sweepers and all kinds of sketchy stuff like that to uh, getting it done. And this is what I set out to do today, to get it done and I got it done earlier than I thought I was going to do it. So I'm pretty happy about that. Now I have the Heart River. In front of me are some serious challenges. I'm going to have raging rapids, even class three plus rapids, canyons, and uh, on the heart itself, and even more to come after that. So, but anyways, I'm going to, uh, yeah, see if I can catch a fish and uh, hopefully get to bed a little early, have a great night's sleep and just enjoy this campsite in a beautiful evening, so awesome. It tastes amazing. I mean, let's be honest, anything with melted cheese is delicious. It's a beautiful day. Oh man. I slept in today. I feel like I just got dehydrated with the hot weather and like I have a headache. My lips are dry, so I'm gonna go chug some water. But it looks like we have another beautiful day. Much needed rest. And uh, I'm looking forward to having a coffee, maybe catching a couple of fish.
see here that uh, wilderness canoe travel is definitely not all about the hardships and the physical challenges and danger and wondering if you're going to make it on time. There are times like this where it is the most peaceful, relaxing, and just beautiful spirit building thing there is in the world. I feel like this is the reward for dealing with the challenges on Elliott Creek that now I just have a surreal, perfect day with perfect, beautiful traveling conditions, fish jumping in the water. What more could you ask for? I'm long gone for the Yukon. Those northern lights I want to see. I'm long gone for the Yukon, boys. For the Yukon is calling for me. Well, I heard the sound of rushing water. And I'm pulling up to what? is a small tributary on my map it shows that it's completely coming off the mountain and you can see actually a patch of white snow up on the mountain where this is coming from so it doesn't have like an alpine lake as its source it's just completely mountain runoff snow runoff and probably a spring um, so i'm going to take water from here because i'm out of water second one in the water watching this one just a little one three dark days three dark days three dark days since they locked me away it's been three dark days Come on. Well, the river's a little more lively now, a little more current. Still tight bends and meandering. So it's still taking a while to get through this stretch. Cold as hell. It's been cold as hell in my lonely cell. It's cold. Coming down the river here and something caught my eye. Oh, and I see a boat stash too and what looks like a cache up in the trees. So yeah, maybe this is uh, a camp used by uh, native people in season some years. I'm not sure. I'm going to go take a quick peek though. Maybe it's an old gold hermit who's going to shoot me if he sees me poking around too is the other exciting thing. Fire pit. John boat. See that boat has, has a flat bottom. That way it has a shallow draft and it could travel up the rapids. Oh man, looks like a bear. Well, uh, here's the cache. You can see up there is a wall tent with poles, some gas, stove pipe, and the ladder. Oh man, yeah, double burner Coleman stove up there. Some basins, some pots. I don't really have anything. I'd like to uh, get up there and re-tarp it for them, but I don't have a spare tarp. You can see uh, something's gotten up there and ripped at it and didn't find any food. Could be just wind and the weather, but that canvas is tough. Those tents aren't cheap, so no one just literally just leaves those in the woods. They usually come back and get them so i imagine that uh the people will be back this year before it's destroyed
There she goes, ladies and germs. She's a little beat up because of the pan. To the Yukon. I know this is the part of the video that you all have been waiting for me silently eating oatmeal I guess I'm gonna try to make it about 40 clicks today but I'm gonna be getting a late start so hopefully it all works out It's calm here for a bit. Looks like there might be some boulders and some interesting white water up here. Shallow. Just gonna go for it. Probably just a proper class one. Yeah, I'd say uh, between Elliott Creek and uh, some of the challenges and tight bends and stuff on this river too, it's not uh, an easy river. There hasn't been any crazy portaging or rapids yet, but there to come, this is the easy part. Looks like just a few big boulders to dodge here. Nothing uh, of too much concern. Some big standing waves near the bottom though. Oh, that's a big rock. <laughs> There's a wave, that's a class one. Woo! Big boulder here. If you hit that, you'd be in trouble. You could actually wrap around that. Had to back ferry there to open up the angle. But uh, yeah, a little bit technical. So we'll call that a class two. But uh, yeah, that's the first real whitewater challenge of the trip, I'd say. Things are looking like they're starting to get interesting in the whitewater department. We got some tricky currents down here. Might be time to uh, put the old spray deck on and dry suit for good measure. Starting to get the old uh, ticker going pretty good. I'm gonna take it left. Miss everything because I don't have the spray deck, so I'm gonna miss all the fun wrap white water. I was like, would have just bombed that. I don't feel like bailing. Cool. I just saw a bull caribou, that was awesome. Beautiful animal, wow. So that's a moose and a caribou. Just headed through a very graded section of river here. And I gotta kinda keep on my toes a bit, make sure I don't go down the wrong channel that could be too shallow or narrow with sweepers. And right under it. Woo! Yeah, that's gonna come right down and gonna be completely blocking the river. The river widens into multiple braids about a kilometer and a half wide. But I think I did pretty good picking the right channels. That's a good wave. Definitely a class one. Even if I would hit that, I would have smashed the bottom of my boat. So that was one to avoid. 
some hot water. Should have stayed far right. Like I was planning on. And I was like, no, left will be fine. Almost like if the water was low, low, you could just tell like that would have just been exposed and you'd be like, oh, I can't go that way. It makes the channel more obvious. Now the current's just pushing into a bunch of logs. See how much this river can change too. Like this might not have been here a couple days ago. It's what I don't like about these braided sections of the river. And what happens is sometimes there's a little place to pass in between the gravel bar and the top of the tree. But if that's too shallow to sink a paddle blade, you can't steer. And you just get pushed into the bank and into the low part of the overhanging sweeper. I've done 30 kilometers today. Where I camp, I'm gonna have done 35. So that means I've paddled 80 kilometers by the end of today <clears throat> total. That means I have 220 left to do in five days. That's horrible. <laughs> Why was I thinking that I would have more time on this trip? Just coming up to an old burn. There's there's something always a little a little eerie, a little haunting about an old burn, but uh, it's cool at the same time. Amazing how it just came up here and this is where it stopped. This is all green and that's all burnt. I'm not sure when this fire was, but not in the distant past, that's for sure. Maybe within the last five years, 10 years. It's nice to camp near an old burn because there's always tons of firewood with all the, the standing dead dry spruce trees. Where the hell am I? I'm lost in some tiny little ray that's so narrow and there's like a sweeper across the river. This is where sweepers can be dangerous. Like this one, for example. Oh. Yikes. Oh, f sweeper across the fucking river. Anyways, this actually looks like not a bad spot here. There's a place for the tent right there that's flat. Driftwood around. I'll take it. I went over the maps a little more and I think I'm gonna take the time to climb Nitro Mountain. I'll basically camp where I'm gonna start the hike from this evening. So I'm gonna bang off 35 kilometers today. I am gonna be going through some canyons today, but they're not really whitewater canyons. So I think I'm gonna risk not putting my dry suit on and leaving the spray deck off uh, in order to just save time and get out of camp quickly because that takes some time. Yeah, this river, it hasn't really needed a spray deck because it hasn't been the big waves, but it still has been very spirited, <laughs> consistent ripping ripping current tight bends you're always on your toes you know being as remote as it is those sweepers 
can be dangerous you know it, it's hard to grade it compared to just a typical whitewater river that's just flat water and then a big rapid where this one is just constantly seems like somewhat of a rapid i brought my fly rod with me catch some grayling maybe a lake trout and so i think i'm gonna rig that up before i leave bust out the fly rod and try a few casts at promising looking spots of course i don't have a ton of time for that kind of stuff because i still got to bang off 35k but um, i should be able to do it all I might do a little bit of fly casting in this spot, I reckon. Well, there doesn't seem to be much of a, a back eddy or area where there's no current here. It's also shallow. Typically the fish like a little back eddy with no current. They can hang out there and pick off food that's drifting down in the current. So this might not be the best spot, but you never know. Well, bummer, no luck here. I'm gonna call this no fish bluff. It act like there is fish there, but it was bluffing. I'll be here all night. There's all these little falcons. I think they're called kites. They're small, fast birds of prey. And uh, looks like there's at least two nesting pairs up there and they didn't like the fact that I was coming close. So they're chirping at me. Well, it looks like the water's still cleared up for grayling to hit. There's one. Small. That well, looks like a good fishing hole there, but I'm almost at camp and it's so late. I'll have to put my fly fishing dreams on hold, I think. Ugh. There yeah, might even be some fish here. But that is the way that I'm gonna hike up to the mountain tomorrow. Looks like a half decent place to camp. Yes, indeed. A beautiful sight. Wow. Beautiful sight. Awesome view. I could smell that forest fire smoke in the air now. You barely see the mountains in the distance. Always a tinge of concern. Hopefully the wind changes and it blows out of here. Hi-yo. So let's see how these look. Look at the cheese. It is day seven and I decided to change my clothes. Up here, up there, to there, up and then across. <sighs> Looks like I really have my work cut out for me here, but uh, I think I can do it. I think I'm gonna go for it. Once I get up there, it'll be pretty easy going and then down. It'll be tough on the knees and that, but uh, it's not as physically arduous on the cardio side. That's a nice sound. 
it appears that the creek is exposed here, running above the rocks. <sighs> Delicious. Now that's some high quality H2O. What movie's that from? This is just made with lard. I can already feel that energy from the pemmican just hitting me. Man, that sun is hot. <sighs> Looks like a little more smoke is blowing in, but uh, view still should be epic from up there. Uh, here is a straight up piece of lava rock. Very close to here there was a shallow sea. That sea gave way over many billions of years to the Mackenzie Mountains. You can find fossils at the tops of the Mackenzie Mountains, fossils of uh, sea creatures, which is wild. And to think that at one time, obviously there's a volcano spewing out around here. All right, this is gonna be a scramble on all fours. You know, if I, you gotta be careful because if I fall and I pick up speed, it could be SOL pretty quick. I just gotta tell myself, hey, first of all, it never gets dark here. Got all day, pace myself. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other and I'll get there and don't get discouraged. Nice once in a while to look back. There's my tent. And see where you've come from when you start to get discouraged. I think trusting the mountain sheep trail is the way to go because it just brought me to this ridge so much easier than if I'd just gone straight up the hair and down. Man, I'm gonna miss this nice breeze and this awesome ridge line. This is so cool up here. I might just take one moment to just sit and take it in. I'm glad that I decided to make this track yeah, easy going once you're up here. Tough to get here, but nice when you're up here. Pretty cool. Well, I have begun my descent. It's coming down part here, and I can see footprints in the grass where the grass is folded over. Looks like a good chance it could be a bear, so just gonna make some noise. Hey, bear! Hey, bear! Beat it! Just looking at that water is making me thirsty. These blueberries are definitely helping to hydrate me. You can see now the river, my campsite's right about there. So I'm getting there. And there is the Heart River. Well, I think it's safe to say I made it and I'm definitely not gonna die of dehydration. My campsite is just over that way, probably 100, 200 meters away. Uh, so I'm more or less gonna follow the river back to the site, but Should be there in two minutes. So I think it's safe to say I did it great day um, Don't have to break camp today staying at my campsite. So I'm gonna go back drink a lot of water and get dinner going
beautiful campsite here perched up on um, what the hell am I on I don't know but uh, perched up high above the river here foggy and and uh, hazy but also forest fire smoke all mixed together are giving us this really cool enchanting look this morning and um, another great place to have a cup of coffee that's for sure well it's looking like I won't get to them today but I do have some intense rapids class 3 Canyon that uh, ever has a place in the back of my mind as approaching and I'm probably gonna want the spray deck for that so I don't need it today but it's a half decent spot to put it on and I might as well just slap it on get it over with okay I got one side lashed down now I do the same thing on the other side all right there we go spray deck on and solar panel re-rigged up so i'm getting on the river probably about 11 30 not ideal but i don't have a super far to make it today so i should be okay look the bald eagle is the gatekeeper of this rapid must have a nest up there I'm going to call this Bald Eagle Rapids. Well, you look at what we have here. A mountain runoff creek. to be caught ladies and germs there is the tributary <sighs> yes okay so far first cast was a nice grayling
So I still don't see any fires by Mount Bunos. I got word that they're north of Mount Bunos, which is kind of the direction I'm traveling. Um, hard to really pinpoint where they are. Some of those caves high up in the mountains, um, you know, Doll Sheep has been using them for thousands of years and you can find preserved fossilized bones and skeletons and stuff um, just lying there even other cool things like that see a cave there but that looks like a death clamber to get up there even for a sheep could have gotten up that way after all oh man I couldn't see until I was right there quite an impressive rock here expect to see gargoyle staring down at me well I am on my way I'm trying to figure out which is the best way to start going up I see two little caves over there a little bit of bushwhacking is required. Doesn't hurt to make a little noise when you're bushwhacking. Hey bear! Just so you don't come up on a grizzly and surprise it. That looks steep. I don't remember looking this steep from back at the river. Just making my way up here slowly but surely. And I glance up quick and it looked like something was staring at me, ducked away behind the rock, something white. So I think it was a uh, Either a doll sheep or a mountain goat. Probably a doll sheep. Kind of cool. There's my canoe. Made it up uh, this long, sharp scree scramble. Really second guessing whether I want to go down that way. But look, I'm almost where I'm headed for. I'm surprised to find what looks like bear poop up here and maybe a mom and cub. It's old. But they both have like flecks of bone in them. It looks like I could get back up the ridge line there and uh, get a view over the other side of this mountain to where I first stopped my canoe and considered climbing. Uh, I haven't seen any caves here, which is, you know, whatever, but it just, it's still super cool. Like I'm just way up here amongst these crazy rock formations. There's crevices in the rock. There's just freestanding kind of spires, basically a little triangles like of a it's basically like a sawtooth across the top there across that ridge it's super cool and the views are just amazing it's it's hard to believe my canoe is way down there i'm actually starting to dread the hike back down It's already six o'clock. <sighs> okay, this is much better. Made it back onto some uh, dirt and vegetation well I did it I made it down through some really steep sketchy scree picked up some uh, nice soft earth with uh, vegetation grasses and stuff in it 
followed that down and now I'm back in the bush. So I just gotta follow this little animal trail here and uh, do a bit of bushwhacking. And I'll be back at the canoe in no time. Awesome, awesome little hike. I'm glad I did it. Okay, so we are done. Epic little trek in the books back on the river. sang and the wild flowers bloom and in sunshine the waters are sleeping for the broken hearted cans thou shalt second spring again though the wafer will cease feather greeting oh you take the high road and i'll take the low road and i'll be in scotland before you for me and my true love will never meet again on the bonny, bonny banks of Loch Lomond. doesn't start for about 12k so I'm gonna tuck this away but I'm definitely gonna be using this white water paddle today okay on the water day 10 I got my work cut out for me baby but on the way there it looks like we got another rapid here yeah a ledge or something there i'm just gonna avoid it rather than trying to scout oh yeah that wouldn't be fun to go into my dump if you bombed into that See a moose. Bye, moose. Bye. She just kind of hung out and watched me drift by. That was cool. Well, we got this marked rapid coming up, so I better start uh, paying attention to the river. Um, I'm coming up to this one last rapid here and I think I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna go ahead and say I think this one's gonna be a solid class three because when I look at the map, I see a marked rapid along with a contour line that crosses the river here. And whenever you see a contour line crossing the river, 
at a marked rapid, usually it's something a little more interesting. So coming up to it right now, I'm probably gonna pop out and scout this one out and then find a place to camp at its base. Um, I'll probably get to camp with any luck around seven o'clock. So not too bad for a 40 kilometer plus long day. Okay, well, I scouted out the rapid and I'm gonna give her. Oh, she looks pretty good. That is ready. That is a lot of food. <laughs> mm. That is delicious. Nailed it. Well, I'm not done it yet. I have probably about 30K to go on the heart. one big curly wave that cuts my back there. I was trying to just go close to it. Probably just should have bombed it. <laughs> Hi seagulls. How much further to the peel would you say? Thanks for nothing. Okay, what did I do? Looks like a pretty big draw. Oh yeah. Oh, she's a big one. She's a big one. Flipping my maps over. This is the last map of the adventure. Almost off of the heart and onto the peel. Crazy. It's heart to leave it behind. <laughs> oh, hilarious. And there it is. I see the Peel River. In about 100 meters, I can say I paddled the heart. Now the most challenging whitewater test of the whole trip is about to hit me, but still, wow. Noticeably bigger than the Heart River. Got some uh, clouds moving in. Looks like some weather might be moving in. I'm on the Peel River. I just did the heart. I just paddled the Heart River, ladies and germs. Well, here's the first set of rapids. And, uh, it looks like there could be a big ledge there.
it is getting on in the evening and uh, starting to feel it starting to feel a little tired it's another hot day but I am on this gravel bar trekking down to scout the last rapid of this adventure after I get past this I am three kilometers from my float plane pickup location um, and it's looking like it's gonna be something pretty interesting but so far it looks runnable I'm gonna come down I'm gonna eddy out there I'm gonna try to hit this on the far right that's some weird current in there I'm trying not to get too squirrely then turn right and try to avoid I try to avoid that at the end but then look down river we have more so we got some tricky currents in here it doesn't look like an easy rapid at all some boiling current and then down river there's more white water I'm gonna give it a go though Well, I am thoroughly mortified. I'm basically running a line. It's like walking on the edge of a cliff. one of the biggest wave trains I've ever run. Holy got the class four. Woo! Almost got stuck on that standing wave. Well, three clicks left. I'm just going to pull over and punch in my exact pickup location so I don't overshoot it here. Maybe take a couple of casts. What did I want to eat for dinner on my last day in the Yukon? Arctic grayling, please and thank you. Not the best campsite, but I'll make do. Oh, the air smells amazing. It's about 8.30 right now. I'm gonna cook a fish and I don't care, stay up pretty late and enjoy my last night in the Yukon. There is my ride out of here. There's my ride out of here. It's all working. Okay, here we go.
Mmm, thank you, honey. Very yummy. No! Yum. Howdy, are you ready to get going? Are you ready to get going? So, like the sign said, we're getting into the interesting part of the Telegraph Creek Road here. And uh, yeah, mountains in the background with snow on them. Going to be some really steep uphills and lots of exciting stuff. So, we're through the easy part. We are definitely not rushing. Um, if you make a mistake here, you know, it's a pretty big one. So I'm not looking forward to driving back the other way because I'll be on the outside of most of these uh, bends where there's, you know, a cliff right down on one side of you. And honestly, for what it is and for where it is, it's in it's in good shape too, I would say. Hey, Tori? Yeah, it's pretty good. Like there's no huge washouts and ruts and rivers washing over and crawling up boulders and stuff no. like that. Like obviously- and There's not a ton of like traffic going the yeah. other way, which is nice. Yeah. That's like, what makes me nervous. And this road we're on now wraps around there and winds up down there Right here is a sheer cliff, looks well over a hundred feet tall. perspective that's where we were driving along that ridge up there just absolutely terrifying and I'm like the thought of driving back I'm like can we fly home <laughs> I didn't know that about yeah, you. I'm terrified. Wow, Why you're I'm freaking out. You're so brave. Like I don't even like standing up here. I'm like so afraid. The old building from Historic Old Telegraph Creek. Still here. Some are in pretty good shape wow, still. This one is in pretty good shape. Yeah. Yeah. Very well, we are almost here at Stikine River Song, which is uh, in the old Hudson Bay Company trading post. We just came down a steep decline um, to see historic Telegraph Creek. Pretty cool, right on the lower Stikine River. And Telegraph Creek's actually a very historic town. It was where they began building a telegraph line, believe it or not. Some people even tried to use Telegraph Creek as an overland route to reach the Yukon during the Yukon Gold Rush. So some of these buildings and stuff here, a hundred years old, old Hudson Bay Company Post and um, several other buildings. And at one time, a steamship actually transported people up the Sakin, including John Muir, who wrote a book on his travels in the area. That's why the older buildings are 
down close to the river where the newer buildings in Telegraph Creek, which are mostly owned by uh, Taltan indigenous people, are up closer to the road. A little more building space there, but uh, amazing little community just kind of built into the side of the mountains here. And we were gonna just jump on the Stikeen River and start paddling today. Instead of rushing, we wanna just take our time to make sure that we have all our equipment and everything dialed in to start our canoe trip, even though we're itching to get on the river. We're paddling the Stikine, yeah! Woo! Nice. Up around this corner, we actually have a proper rapid. So we have to like, yeah, Just keep your eye on the far right. See that? Yeah, piece of cake, right? Very good. Dad, dad play. Dad, dad play. Dad, dad play. Okay, dad, dad will play. much stopped we just guide the crap out of the whole tent Huddy was super scared but Tori went in the tent and calmed him down and he fell asleep and all is well so um, the tent we have is meant for like Mount Everest serious issue this morning I just woke up and climbed out of the tent and our canoe is gone crazy nowhere to be found with the 
craziness of trying to get our tent together and just, you know, Huddy being scared and, and trying to calm him down, we just never even thought about the canoe. So it must have blown from like here into the creek and then down the creek. You know, we're not gonna die. We have tons of food and everything like that. And we we have an in-reach too, so we can get someone to pick us up in the boat, but crazy chain of events here. Well, I'm just heading out to find this canoe can't say anything like this has ever happened to me before. I'm really just surprised that that even happened. I mean, I guess not thinking back to it, yeah, the gusts were really, really strong. It's um, about an 80 pound canoe, but it probably just acted like a sail and the wind just took it. Well, I don't know if you could see that, but a jet boat just went by and I waved him down. Um, guy's name's Miles, he's from Glenora. And he's gonna look for the boat for us. So he just said like, he's actually on his way down because his parents have a camp down river and all these trees blew down on their cabin. So the storm last night hit everybody pretty hard. If we can't uh, find anything, he's gonna give us a ride back to uh, uh, Telegraph Creek. So fingers are freaking crossed, man. Yeah! You did it! Holy dude, you just saved the day. Well, that was Miles and uh he really came by at a good time. He told me that was a once in 50 years freak windstorm and it just caused disaster all over the place. So uh, good to know that we're not gonna be dealing with that again. all the fishing rods devastating um, but we brought a backup reel and a bunch of line uh, no real lures though which is concerning um, and I do have a fly rod but fly fishing it's, it's harder and it's particularly tough in this river just because of the silty water and also it takes more time so we don't have a lot of time so and I don't have a fly rod that can handle salmon, and I sure as heck don't think this could either, but... Buddy. I'm basically trying to make myself a rod. I managed to finish this sucker off last night. This is my spare reel. No, no, no! It's, uh, it's Daddy, a little wonky. Yes, got Daddy. Beef. Hold on. It's a little wonky. The handle's a little loose. But uh, um, it's a lot better than nothing. <clears throat> I snare wired it to the rod and I just covered that uh, snare wire with a little bit of tape. And then I added uh, snare wire for guides. And then in my survival kit, I always keep a spare lure. Use snare wire there to add them. And I covered up the, uh, the twisted wire with uh, a little piece of tape so the line wouldn't get stuck on it. And we have 
a makeshift fishing rod. So North just trotted briskly out of the woods and turning and barking back over his shoulder and then was like defensively blocking this trail going into the woods and then went over and was defensively blocking the other trail. See he notices the two trails into the site? Yeah. Uh, and there are, there are two trails. Uh, the bear banger is uh, an explosive like and it screws into this pen launcher and I just pull this back and shoot it. The pin hits this, it flies 50 feet and blows up really loudly. Anyways, I'm gonna fire this bear banger. Big noise, yay! No, no, no! Are you sure you don't want him? Come on, Hud, you can do it, bud. Here you go, Wes. Yes, Papa. No, Papa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Papa. Open the mud. Papa. Probably coming from a glacier, right? Eh? Yeah, probably. Look, look how many waterfalls there. are on it. You know? Shoulders. Shoulders? Okay, shoulders. <laughs> look, look, go. See you, Mako? All right, lots of sweepers around here for sure. We're just picking our way through a bunch of uh, snags and sweepers and stuff, but plenty of room to navigate if we can manage the varying currents. All right, paddle hard. Yeah. There. Get to the right of that. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta keep that sweep going and keep keep us on this angle right here. There's the cabin. Not easy to find. It's not uh, exactly the Taj Mahal, but it is a cabin. And the wood stove. Oh, Ooh, a big old wood stove. Ooh. Roof doesn't leak much. It's going to be so nice to have dry things. Where's that? 
don't have to wear it if you're not, if you're okay. Here. are lifting a bit in some places so I'm really starting to get a, a look at just all the glaciers just a snow capped glaciated mountain It is not easy to find dry wood when you're in the rainforest. And I actually cut down a standing dead the other day. It was completely soaked right through the middle. So even standing dead wood isn't good. Um, but I managed to find what looks like a spruce tree and it is bone dry in the middle, which is awesome. I go for ones where you can see the bark kind of starting to fall off, but it's not completely fallen off and punky. You have to split these down and baton kindling and whittle fine tinder.
Okay, so it is day eight and we woke up to pounding rain this morning and got everything packed up. Then it was kind of on and off rain. Not the most fun to wake up to, but uh, you know, we actually got away from camp in decent enough time. Today, we're gonna paddle into Alaska and visit Chief Shakes Hot Springs. And we're gonna camp there. So there's these beautiful hot springs that we're gonna bask in and we just can't wait to get there. So another amazing highlight of the trip coming up today. But we have about 35 kilometers uh, to paddle before getting there and maybe some tricky current. We also have to make sure we find a big long side slough that takes you well away from the main river or you miss the hot springs altogether. So got a couple things to make sure we deal with, some tricky white water and some navigating, but we think we should be okay. Just about to push off right now and head on our way. Chief Shakes Hot Springs, here we come. basically uh, in a, a narrow side slough that branches quite a ways off the main river. Hopefully the current picks up, but this is the way to get to Chief Shake Hot Springs. couldn't find the hot springs anywhere. Uh, time was getting later and later. Um, we tried going up a tributary a ways, turned back, and we realized uh, now once we got to this Alpine Creek here that we just passed the hot springs. The way to get into is about a quarter mile up river. So to get there, we'd have to bushwhack. And so I don't know if we're gonna have time to go to the hot springs anymore. But uh, anyways, I got shelter set up, uh, the tarp and tent set right up. Um, Tori's just uh, changed Wesley out of his wet clothes. Uh, Huddy's hungry. He's uh, uh, following me around trying to help me with different things. It's adorable. And um, yeah, I'm hoping to still uh, cook up some dinner and uh, get to bed before it's too, too late. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On your hands clean. Well, morning interview, uh, day nine of our trip. The rain just hammered and hammered all night long. I woke up in the middle of the night and we were getting flooded. Tori and I had to wake up, throw all our stuff on higher ground, drag the tent over here. A lot of stuff got wet, but fortunately nothing got lost. So I gotta say, that's another first on this trip for me. That's where we were camped yesterday when you saw my, me setting up the tarp. And in the middle of the night, we had to drag through up into here. Our canoe and everything at about 4.30 in the morning. There's just been absolutely relentless, relentless rain on this trip. And we're trying to stay positive, but it's uh, the weather has just been horrible. I tied the canoe up to here yesterday. I ended up having to drag it way up here. So yeah, just crazy chain of events uh, with this flooding. You can see the water still coming up. Yeah, just not a, a fun thing to happen, that's for sure. I can't believe all the things that have happened on this trip, eh, hun? Like windstorm, never-ending rain, losing our canoe, getting flooded. Two periods where there's been over 40 hours of like, the first one was about 40 hours of straight rain with a brief, with a brief break before it picked up again. And now we're on to another uh, stretch of 40 hour rain here. Well, it's, uh, it's still coming down, but a little bit of a break in the rain. And we pulled over at this little floating cabin. The cabin's locked, uh, but we're just hanging out on the porch here because as we are pushing towards the mouth 
and towards the Garnet Ledge cabin where we're gonna stay today. The weather really just picked up and uh, we were battling white caps that were blowing up river. And for anybody who's tried paddling down river with the current, while facing an upriver headwind and white caps. It's very, very challenging and just sketchy to paddle in. Um, so we just called it basically. We turned around, we front ferried across the river, battling some white caps and pulled up at this cabin. And we're just gonna get our jet boat pick up here as opposed to at Garnet Ledge. We figured for the safety of the kids, just with the crazy chain of events we've had on this trip with never ending rain, wind, losing the canoe, flooding, not finding the hot springs, more rain and then more rain and also a lot of rain that uh, we just thought, okay, at what point is just this, this just crazy and luck is not on our side here. Um, so we decided to call the uh, jet boat. So we built a little, uh, a little shelter um, on, on this guy's, whoever's cabin this is, I have no idea, but thank you. And um, we uh, ran the stove, we drank some hot chocolate and uh, sorted some of our gear and that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, we're just waiting for the jet boat pickup. So I guess the final 12K of the Stikine uh, will still travel, but uh, not by canoe. February that is sitting at a balmy minus two degrees. I think I lost the bag. We didn't have a ton of time, so to speed things up, I brought the snowmobile. We got a canvas wall tent with a wood stove. Got the whole family here with me. Just Thank that you. little bit, eh? Have it. Uh, high five, we made it. Yeah, high five, bud. High five, Wes. High five, Wes. Was he sleeping? No. Hey, Wes. High five, bud. Should I put these on now? Yeah. Okay, it's my bad. Let's take these ones back to mommy. We got five. 
Lord. Yay! stove's like right on the ground it's not gonna melt down and yeah. be all lopsided it looks awesome in here Good morning. It is our first morning out here and uh, it's looking like it's going to be beautiful. We have some cloud coverage. <clears throat> Not super cold today. It's maybe this morning, maybe minus five. I stoked the fire through most of the night last night and kept it nice and warm in there. Um, essentially, I just kind of sleep with my sleeping bag off of my shoulders and then when the fire dies, I kind of wake up from the cold, throw a few more logs in there quickly, go back to bed. North has a little flap under the door where he can come in and out. And he just decided to sleep outside because I think it was too warm in there and it didn't get very cold last night. So he's a husky. Um, yeah, I would have liked to have maybe gotten up a bit earlier and gone ice fishing, but um, there's going to be more time for that. Uh, we're going to be here tomorrow night as well, but uh, the weather is supposed to warm up quite a bit So we don't want to stay here too long and uh, Deal with slush and stuff like that that the warm weather brings and then hopefully we're out of here in plenty of time before It's supposed to be like plus four and raining which would be just miserable. It's been such a weird winter, but uh, it's nice to get out and um, enjoy what is near perfect conditions. But for the most part, yeah, there's just been strange rain in January and it's an El Nino year and uh, more bigger than average El Nino year. And that mixed with climate change has made for probably the warmest winter of my entire life. Mama tail, this is Mama tail, right? Yep, that's right. Yeah. I know. What's got your interest over there, buddy? Think you're ready to get a minnow going? Don't spill. You got one. Good job, buddy. See how far it goes down. <gasps> Look, there's a big fish down there. A bigger fish is gonna try to eat the minnow. And then we're gonna eat the bigger fish if we catch it. Just gonna put this like this. I think we have a pretty good chance, bud. If that flag pops up, you tell daddy and we'll come catch the fish, okay? Oh yeah. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. Here we go. The fish must have gone and swam around something. Oh, here we go. Come on, Splakey, Splakey. Oh, it's a good one. Woo, it's a good one. Whoa. Oh, it's a beast. It's a beast. What can I do? Can I help? I don't know. Oh man, this hole's gonna be too small. Hmm. It's a big fish, honey. Oh, I can't get his head through. There it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Out. It's a beast! <gasps> Hell yeah! Yeah, baby, look at the colors! It's beautiful! Oh my goodness! Look at the colors! That's a splake. Yes, yeah. honey! 
We caught it with the minnow, bud. We're eating tonight. Look at that red. Wow. This is my personal best flake, honey. That is incredible. Let's put this in the water. Oh, wow, wow. Honey, we got one. Yeah. Yeah. It pulled the stick right into the water because it's not cold enough for that to have iced up properly. And we got a beauty splake. Look at the colors on it. It almost looks like an Arctic char. But that is a beauty. Hi, yeah, honey, I'm not just messing around out here. That is going to be a great dinner. Do you like your new camp chair? Your hands are pretty cold, dude. Where are your hand warmers? Why is he sleeping? I'll go walk. Thank you. You're welcome. This is nice! Ah, yeah, that, that's nice! That's a very Like the buffalo. Mmm, honey food. Yummy. Okay. Ah, ah, it's working. Come here, let's go, Bobby. Come here, let's go, Bobby. Wait a minute. Daddy went to the lake and got some water, honey. <sighs> hey, make it some space. So here we are in the Halliburton Forest. It is late. Uh, we're going to be setting up Camp Lake. We're heading into a backcountry lake, but good thing it's not terribly cold today. 
uh, and it's not windy, so you know it should be okay. We got flashlights, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, safe ice for the snowmobile, and we're all gonna ride on the same machine. Ready to get going, bud? Yeah. What are we gonna be doing? On the snowmobile. Do you wanna go camping? Yeah. Okay, so pretty much pitch black right now, but uh, ideally we don't start setting up in the dark, but now that we've just accepted that's how it's gonna be, we're starting to have fun again. And you know what? A lot of the time when you're out late in the season, especially in the Canadian North, uh, you're working in the dark a lot. And uh, so we'll just pretend that we're in the Yukon. Okay, let's do this. You don't need it? Honestly, the other one. Venison loin chops, baby. These are, look at the fat on this deer. Little Montreal steak spice. Venison loin chops, bone in. Cheers, hon. We did it. Look at that. Is that clean up, Bob? Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, it is um, the beginning of our first full day here in Halliburton Forest. And it looks like it's a pretty nice day. Maybe a little overcast, but no wind. Maybe about minus 15 or something like that. So we are going to jump out onto this lake. Um, I'm going to cut some more wood first, maybe, but we're going to jump out on this lake and uh, we'll see whether we walk, snowmobile. We're going to find a spot where we think there might be some fish and try to get into some brook trout. I have, I haven't heard uh, a lot of good things about this lake. I heard that it's tricky, and you know, from some other people that have fished, it didn't catch much. So um, I don't have super high hopes, but you never know. Yeah, bud. It's water. Well, I initially set up in a spot close to camp and we're going for speckled trout or brook trout, same thing. Uh, and so when you're speck fishing, you know, you want anywhere from three feet deep water beneath the ice to as much as nine or 10. Some people go for six. I'm trying to go a little shallower. So over there, we're about, you know, four and five. And over here, I'm about three. Um, so yeah, I left Tori was jigging and um, Huddy and I came over here maybe about 50 meters and uh, set up another uh, line near a down tree. This is a set line. So because I'm not gonna be jigging this line, I put some boughs over the hole and that'll keep it from freezing up and freezing that line into the ice, which could mean you lose a fish. Okay. 
one sucks, eh? That blew it. Three hot dogs, Brody? Yeah. All right, three hot dogs, eh? I ate four. Four? <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah, I know. See, Teddy's yeah. nose. Uh, oh my god, this is so good, honey. starting to come down out there. trail is pretty intense really bumpy Huddy's been holding on on the back I don't know how much further I'm going to try to push it it's going over some really big bumps and I don't want Huddy to get thrown off I'm just taking it slow uh, I'm going to check the map if I'm not too much further I might go for it find a place I could turn around but also the snow's super deep which is making it more challenging and this trail isn't broken so it's just like powder snow so it's hard not to kind of gun it in certain areas so Hudson, we're gonna turn around and go back to see mommy. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, are you sleepy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay
uh, made it back. And uh, we're having some hot dogs, me and Huddy, in the warmth of the tent. That was crazy. We didn't really achieve much of anything as our goals were to make it into another lake and fish. We only made it halfway into the other lake, but given the absolute crazy whiteout, um, I think we did pretty well because even just finding the trail was not easy. How is that? <laughs> is it yummy? Mm. Yeah, so what did happen? Tell me. So you got stuck? Yo, maybe you no, duck. but... Yo, maybe you duck, Mama. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I guess how do you... Uh, let you out. <laughs> Okay, stay here. Oh. <laughs> you got it. Nice. Stop it, you. It's so young. Get the wee. Get the wee. Get the wee, Dada. Thanks, bud. What? Good morning, ladies and germs. It is the third day of our adventure. And uh, today we are actually continuing on to another adventure right in this area. So really it's all one and the same, uh, but it is time to pack up today. We have bluebird skies, probably sitting at about a, a crisp minus 12, snow in the trees from the absolute massive dumping of snow we got yesterday beautiful beautiful day and a great day to travel so we are just packing up and we are all going to head over to an off-grid tiny cabin that you've probably seen us stay in before and that is also here in the Halliburton forest so we're changing up the way that we are going to be lodging we're packing away the tent we're going to go explore another area of the Halliburton forest and fortunately there is a cabin there um, it's a cabin skate cabin and really really comfy little spot and maybe we'll have more luck with fishing in that area anyways yeah so we're just getting things uh kind of packed up Tori's packing up the sleeping bags packing up some basic things i'm getting water onto bowl got coffees going and uh, water for oatmeal Get going.
last time we went back and got our snowshoes? Yeah. yeah. Anywhere around here looks good, huh? Okay. That tree. Looks There's good. a tree. Yeah. We're gonna fish near it. Yeah. We're gonna fish near the tree for trout. It's a nice, warm, sunny day. What a beautiful day. I'm just using this small Williams spoon and I'm tipping it with a minnow tail. Daddy, you cut the big one? We'll go back to the cabin? Yeah. your camp chair but you're sharing it right now bud but thank let you let Wesley sit for one sec okay these wool blankets are we need to get you one of these chairs now we know hey cheers honey cheers nice day god it's warm today yeah have a party no uh, check it out Just me, old dad, trying to catch a fish for dinner for the fam. As you can see behind me, the sun is going down and there is nary a trout on the ice. A sad moment for old Jim who spent quite a few of his waking hours this day chasing trout to come up with nothing. Can't win them all I guess. Awesome day all in out fishing. Bummer I didn't catch anything, but that's how she goes sometimes.
it looks like your dad is coming back. Huh? Your daddy is on his way back. Mm -hmm. Do you think he caught a fish? Yeah. Yeah? That's good. Wesley, do you think your daddy caught a fish? No. Wobble, wobble. Wesley. Did daddy catch a fish? His load's a little bit lighter than mine. Oh, oh no, didn't catch anything. Really? Yeah. But my dad caught a fish, dad. I didn't catch one this time, bud. Oh, who did that? No, I'm sad I didn't get one. But you can't catch one every time. I know it probably seems like that. Dad, mom. don't catch a fish, Mama. Aww. Okay, bud. It's okay. Yeah. Good catch. Me? Yeah. Oh my God, that mold wine uh, smells uh, phenomenal, uh, honey. Ow. Okay. Mm, that's really good. Whoa. Wow. That good, is eh? your best mold wine yet. You think? For sure. Yeah. Thanks, Teddy. So easy. Is it what? What is it? Come on, Teddy. Right now, it's winter. It's raining out there. Is it the padlock, Teddy? Oh, Johnny. Oh, Padjo. Padjo. We'll be there on the. Oh, perfect, Aggy Wags, honey. Where's the fork? Here you go, hold the pot of your Hold the pot of your foot. Pretty nice day today, eh? Ow. How's that? Hi. Hi. Well, as you can see, we are just about ready to go. I got all our stuff loaded into the two Whoa. sledges. Huddy's got his helmet on. He's already raring to go. Hudson, where are you going? Where are you going? The next step is we're gonna jump on a snowmobile and ride out of here all the way back to our truck, which will probably be about a 45 minute ride, but it is such a beautiful and warm day. Looking forward to it. So another great little adventure in the books. Okay, hello everybody. Here we are in the Yukon. Long drive here from the White Horse area. Beautiful scenery and I'm about to jump off. We got Ryan McGilvery and some of his Yukon expedition sled. So we're well outfitted for this trip. We're going into a secret lake. We got our buddy Lee along with us too. And there's rumors that have been told about giant lake trout in this lake. But we got a bit of an expedition to get in there. We got a river we got across. Not too sure what the conditions are gonna be. And we're gonna be fighting against dark so decent chance you see us showing up at night but I think we got just about the best outfit to tackle whatever comes our way so here we go over to Russia 
Then they would fly them from wherever, from down south, work their way through Whitehorse, here, Anchorage, and then uh, across over to Russia. So when would this have been operational? Uh, 40s, you know, 40, I think it was up to like in the mid 50s or something like that. Yeah. Well, we made it into the lake. It was a long ride, man. Maybe three, I don't know, four hours or something like that. Pitch black. Well, still a little little light in the sky. And we're gonna go find a place to set up. Anyway, so yeah, I'm just gonna cruise along the lake here, catch up with these guys, and watch out for overflow, and uh, hopefully find a spot before it's absolutely pitch black. I doubt it though. Well, as you can see, I am tucked into bed. Uh, really cool. We finally got to the lake we were headed for. It was dark and uh, tried to find a place that was deep enough to fish. Eventually found a spot after it got a lot colder once the sun went down and we set up this awesome uh, pop-up shelter and basically set up on top of the holes. Did a little bit of fishing, just kind of got camp set up, watched a great Northern Lights display, and we're pretty beat. Long 12-hour day to get into where we were and with everything on top of that. So looking forward to a good night's sleep and uh, hopefully tomorrow we can land some fish. Anyways, night and uh, tomorrow's another day. Billy went out here this morning, right? Yeah. Just hitting this white tube jig with a UV light. And uh, this is a glowing tube jig. And this just gets the, the glow amperage pumping. Oh, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, fish on here. Look at him go, he's, he's making a run for it. I can, I can tell it's just freaking. Woohoo! Here we go. Good Jim. Yeah! Oh, good? Woo! Yeah. Hey, Lee, come check this out. Look at that. That is a beauty. What a fight. Okay, let's see here, Jim. <sighs> We're gonna have to let this big boy go, but that's the kind of stuff we come for. And there's bigger ones in this lake too. Eating some uh, chimichangas, right? Is that what these are? Mm. Oh, he's big. Oh, let him run. Or let he's him gonna run. run me out. Okay, just use your finger to spool it, to slow it down if you have to. Oh, he's big, man. Oh, I'm worried he's not gonna fit through the hole. This is a 40 inch fish, man. Holy sh Oh, oh. This is towing harder than that 39 inch we caught the other day. Yeah. Yeah. It's right down at bottom, too. Oh, we gotta bring it in. He's the almost way. filling up that five foot grid. Oh, sh yeah. Oh, f go. Here go. Here go. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah! 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 Yes! Hell yeah. Right <laughs> on, right amazing. on. You nailed it. Looks like it's a nice day. A little little bit overcast, but uh, no wind. Probably sitting around minus 10, but it's it's nice and cozy in the uh, in the ice shelter. And we're probably going to set up 
another tent today. Um, it was a bit of a pain in the ass because we have to put our cots in, get ready for nighttime and then pull all that stuff out and then get ready for ice fishing and cook outside and stuff. So we're gonna have another tent that's gonna be our sleeping, maybe cooking tent if it's cold and then the ice fishing tent and get things more dialed. But uh, nobody's ready to start doing that right now because the bite is on, baby. Oh, baby. All right, you need help? If you like. Just you gotta kind of guide his nose up. So pull yeah. the pull the ice out of the hole so you can see. Here we go. Oh, he's actually he's a good fish. Oh, oh. If he runs, let him run. Don't force him. Oh, there you go. Let him run. Let him run. Going, going, going for another run. Woo! Oh, yes, yes, yes. Grab him to go. Go play. Go play. There we go. Woo! That's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah, buddy. How, how does it feel? Feels like a good one. Yeah, we just have your jagged bit there, Lee. Ooh, we get, let him run a little bit more, Lee. Okay, just pull him okay, Wait, careful, right careful. There. His head's pull not him. in. His head's pull not coming up. He's a good size. Just, Jim, hold him. Pull okay, him okay, hand. okay, okay. Yeah. Boom, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yes, buddy. All right. Good fish. We got lines up the yin yang. Woo! Got a bit of a tangle going there. Oh. Lee lands a fing uh, tank. About time, eh? Yes, bud. Oh, yeah. Uh, see you later, buddy. Thank you. Good to meet you. Woo! Awesome. Yes, Lee. High five, bud. So I'm thinking we should put the, uh, the vestibule on this side here. Grab it this way here. Okay, let me get you. You good? You good? Yeah, okay. Okay. Back she comes. The head, is that good? Oh yeah, everything's good. That's it, if you use bigger bait, you tend to get the bigger fish. Right. So, I've got a weight, two hooks. When you set down, you always want to make sure you get it on the bottom. Bourbon are hitting at night a lot of the time too, right? That's right, yeah. Okay, well, after an awesome morning of slamming fish and uh, having breakfast and coffees, did a little work around camp, got the Arctic oven set up with an awesome little propane stove. That was pretty cool. I've never slept in an Arctic oven before. And then uh, the lake trout bite died a little bit. So we took a rip down the lake and um, we're setting some lines for burbot. Like a little town here starting, eh? Like, uh, start offering trading goods. Uh, 
Now look at this vestibule. Wow. All the shit you can store there. Well, Lee has done the honors of uh, feeding us again. And this time, he brought chili, homemade chili. Homemade moose chili from Moose Cut in September. Nice. Mm. Well, we are back at it here in the ice fishing hut. Uh, no action yet, so you, know, you never know. Sometimes they're moving around, sometimes they're feeding, sometimes they're not, but my guess is that we're gonna get into something in a little bit. Yeah, this uh, sonar that we have here is pretty awesome. It really makes things exciting. You can really just see your own lure going up and down. You can see when fish are coming in, and so you know when to kind of get dialed in and make sure that you're jigging properly. And it's just a lot more fun because you can see what kind of action you're getting down there. Oh, Look at this thing. Jesus, Lee's got Lee's got something here, boys. Oh, here's, here's a big one coming in. Ryan's about to get one too. Oh, oh, just missed it. Oh, oh there. there he is. He's a good size. He is a Good size, bud. Oh, yeah. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. You got Look it? at that. Oh, yeah. There we ah, go. Let's see here. I got yeah. a camera here. Okay, there's Lee's fish. I'm going to give it to him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> whale watching tour out here boys it's getting geared up here to uh head out for the day bite slow down here so we might try a couple of different spots and uh we're definitely going to check those bourbon lines Oh yeah, yeah. You got one? one? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yes, yeah, bye. Oh, it's a good one. Hey, just let him run a little bit. Oh, it's a oh, good it's a one. Pike. Oh darn. Hey, you gotta let him go. Let's see him. Woo! Holy shit, that's a big pike. That's not a good spot for a set line. For a burbot line? Yeah. Big old pike. That guy's gotta go home though. See you later, buddy. We're gonna try some new spots and maybe better luck next time. So we're gonna try new spots, no luck with the first spots. We're gonna go fire in as many holes as we can and uh, you know, try to get back and find a new spot to fish before the evening bite. But uh, yeah, we got a bit more work to do same thing as yesterday, putting in a hole, traveling about 100 meters, doing it all over again. Hit on the way down. <laughs> You're hungry. As soon as I drop my rod in. Oh, here comes. Oh ho! Keeper? That's, that's a keeper, yeah. yeah. Probably the second smallest fish we've caught this entire time, eh? Yep. And that's a pretty good fish by most people's standards. Well, I think I'm gonna let it go. It's a little small to keep, definitely could keep it we're not keeping any big ones but uh, there we go just hit on the way down let's send it home ribs look at that we explored the entire lake today 
made our way back here and started catching fish. So maybe the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Good morning. It is our fourth day out here and this is gonna be our last full day uh, to fish this lake because tomorrow morning we might fish in the morning but then we gotta break camp and uh, get out of here. We got some action here, baby. It was a long wait. Woo, it's a good size. Let's go down there? Oh, it's going for a run. You know, there's a couple big ones. Right there, right there. See him? Oh yeah. This might be our, the biggest one yet. Here he comes, here he comes. He's spooky. Oh, oh, he's big, he's big. Oh shoot, let him run, let him run, let him run, let him run. Here we go, here we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got him, got him. Oh shit, man. Oh yeah. He's big. Woo! Here we go, guys. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, Check out this big boy. The size of that thing. Hell yeah, baby. <laughs> Woo! All right, here we go. Took a little longer to hook up today, so but we got to... a big old laker, baby. Look at that beauty. Let's get a closer look at this guy. He's still going. Okay, you're gonna let him go. Finally we connected, so yeah, that feels pretty freaking exciting! Yes! So what's going on right now is uh, Lee has hooked into what's probably the biggest fish of the trip. He's been already fighting it for well over five minutes. Um, nine minutes now. Nine minutes now, yeah, nine minute fight. He's getting sore, but it's just crazy, a lot of intensity here. It's running out his reel, it's running out his spool, he's using this bait caster. Okay, you're gonna pull up and then reel down the knee. Oh, Holy shit, it. like it's still taking life. I see it through the ice. Holy crap, reel faster, Lee, reel faster. And you gotta lift it up as you reel. Lift, 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 and then reel down. Oh my god, look at him under the ice. Oh, there he is. Oh man, that's a big fish. Holy. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Look, you can see it through the ice. Oh man, that's a big fish. Holy. I've never felt a fish with so much power in my life. And then here, here he comes, here he comes, real fast. Real fast. Let's see if we can get his nose up here. Look at him, guys. Look at him. Oh my god. Holy cow. Jeez, he's just taking line. Straight line now, guys. Look at that reel. Look at that thing under the ice. Whoa. <laughs> Look at that. Here we go. Here, there's the leader. There's the leader. Come on. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes, yes. No. Go on. Oh, no. <laughs> what happened? We lost him on the ice? Let's get another one. It's still down there. Was it just from I'm, being I'm still vibrating right now? Like that's like that's like sneaking up on a 40 inch ram oh. right there. Oh cheers, buddy. Really? Like cheers, cheers buddy. Lee. Awesome. Equally cheers, as awesome. Equally was exciting. Awesome, yeah. Just a fing dinosaur. Yeah. Well, the day got nice. Um we're noticing uh when the high pressure rolls around. The fishing seems to pick up. Low pressure, we're, you know, fish were coming in, but we weren't getting any bites. And as soon as it started to get nice and sunny out and we started to see some blue sky, so we just started smashing big fish, so. are back in the ice fishing hut. We actually found an area where there's sandy bottom about nine feet deep, which is good for burbot. So we set a couple lines there for burbot. And we drilled some holes out this way and found that it got shallower. So we're actually at a deep point here. So we picked a pretty good spot to begin with um, cause we're fishing at about uh, 60 feet deep. Anyways, I'm gonna jump back in there. Big fish, big fish, big fish. We're gonna play it nice and careful, nice and slow. 
So what's going on now is Ryan has just hooked into a beast. Uh, it could be <laughs> another giant one similar to the one that got off right below the ice earlier. But it's taken a long time to bring it in, so we're just doing it slowly but surely. Guys, this is it. This is the one we were waiting for. <laughs> ten, ten feet away. Ten feet? Okay. Getting close up. Oh, here he is, here he is. Don't, wor don't oh, even kid, worry about Jesus. it. Jesus! Chris, don't get him on the camera. Holy Holy sh! Take your time, take your time. Holy sh! What a fing monster. He's coming through, he's coming through! Yes, 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 yes! Okay, let me check out yeah. this. Yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh, congrats, man! Woo. Oh my god, that is an absolute whale. <sighs> Wow, what a freaking tank, bro. Oh yeah, I can't see the tail of it though. Woo! Oh, yeah, keep... What a dinosaur, bro. Good job. Look at the size of the mouth on that thing. <sighs> see okay. you later. See you later, buddy. Yeah! Oh! Yes! Good job. Yes! Yeah, baby! Fuck. Guys, we fucking did it. Good job, Ryan. <laughs> Hell Woo! yes. Yes! I'm a shaking. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I haven't fucking shot like this for a ram in like forever. Oh. How you feeling there, buddy? Oh, I'm like, I freak it out. Freak it out. Just <laughs> oh my God. Personal best Laker. Personal best. Oh, fuck it. Yeah. yeah. Yes! That's gonna be a hard one. <laughs> That's gonna be a hard one to beat. Wow. Um, so we're reeling in, but uh, man, I guess I lost one at the end of Tangle Our Lines, but the, the finale was the absolute whale, the pig, uh, bigger than the, you know, than uh, the biggest one of the trip so far. So a pretty epic way to end it. But right now is pretty much the last of it. We're reeling in, and I'm looking forward to our, our next annual Yukon ice fishing trip. This is a, a Martin set. Uh, it's called a Martin box for Fisher, I guess, too. It's broken, but this trap goes in the box. You can see the fur on the tree. Just something that's kind of uniquely the Yukon, like trapping is still a fairly major part of life here, even though you can't make money from it like you could, but people still actively do it. <laughs> set this here uh, is looks like a conibear 330 size um, and this looks like a, a wolverine box so essentially you take that trap and you'd stick it in the box and bait the back of the box which would force the wolverine to go through it and boom it's an instant kill trap you wouldn't see a trap set like this uh, closer to where I am where there's pet dogs and stuff could get caught in it but out here it's not an issue but anyways, yeah, I can't say I've ever seen a Wolverine set before.
Well, that is it. Another great one in the record books. We are back where we started and just loading up the trailer to finish off our trip. It was just amazing. Everything I could hope for, just uh, getting back into that wild country, tangling with these giant lake trout, hanging out with these guys, camping out on the ice, exploring the lake. We rode back, I got some beautiful views along the way. And it was really interesting to uh, do a larger scale snowmobile trip. Every different kind of travel has its own challenges. Snowmobiling, it's not as physically demanding as man hauling a toboggan, but there's other things you gotta know. You gotta know how to get unstuck. You need more mechanical knowledge, different ways to pack, lash down your gear, etc., etc. And it was really cool to learn a bit more about snowmobiling, uh, learn how to ride in deep powder, and just experience what was hands down the best ice fishing of my life. It's been another amazing trip in the Yukon.